Good morning. Uh, great to have a few minutes together today, and thanks for joining us. And uh, we're going to be in the book of Judges in a minute, Judges 14, looking at a couple of their verses as well. But I wanted to just say what a great Sunday. If uh, you weren't here, we had, uh, we're, of course, we're having double services in the morning. That spreads our crowd out. We have Sunday school classes, adult classes at 9, other adult classes at 1030, and that divides up our, our crowd. But what a great day. Uh, we had people saved Saturday. Had uh, um, a gentleman baptized Sunday that was uh, that was saved in the last week or so, and I guess a week and a half ago he was saved and came to church last week and this week got baptized this week and Sunday night. What a great night! And uh, if you're if you're just getting uh, adjusted with the uh, the home or where you're staying. Uh, staying in, getting out, whatever. We've got people in the parking lot listening on the FM station. We've got, that's at 1030 in the morning and in the evening. And then on Wednesday night as well. But um, on uh, the night, we have a nine o'clock church and then a 1030 service. So 1030 is online live streaming. And we're just trying to make it easy for you to, to uh, join us one way or another. But Sunday night's great. We have um, I'm in a small race platform in the parking lot. We have people just bring their own chairs, use church chairs. We're scattered out all over the parking lot. It's not orderly. Uh, usually we like everything real rows and, and, uh, and there's nothing orderly. It's a mess. People over scattered all over and if they want to get off on their own, but, but, uh, it's great to sing together, to hear each other sing. And then behind the parking lot in the, the next section behind the trees, there's, I don't know how many people are parked there in their cars, but um, they're, they're parked right in the service. And so there's a bunch of folks in their car during the service. And, and uh, we just have, we had some of the orchestras out there Sunday night and the, uh, uh, of course, the keyboards out there and, and the PA is a mess. Uh, what a wreck. Um, we're, we're just not set up for all the wireless that it's required to be outdoors. But anyway, we, we, we might raise some money this next week or two to get some new mics and things. But the Sunday night's a good time. And some of the guys, uh, if you weren't there Sunday night, some of the guys, they, they had set a table up with prepackaged goodies, chips. And I don't know what all they had back there. I didn't get any of it. But I saw, oh, I saw some candy bars, world's finest chocolate candy bars. And um, it was a good, a good night, an enjoyable night. And I love the singing, and we got to send off Michael and Susanna Rubio. And actually, today, right now, they're um, they're going to start off. I don't know when they're leaving, but um, Tuesday they said they were leaving and driving back to West Virginia. And and, and uh, love getting to see our young people uh, go off to serve God around the country um, this weekend. If you didn't get to see them, hope I hope Tanasio. Uh, she's married now to Jonathan Reamer, so Jonathan and Hope Reamers were here. They're serving in a church in Gulfport, Mississippi, and a newlywed couple. One of our young ladies grew up here. Uh, what a pleasure Rachel Cook is. And uh, I mean, the smartest girl sings, plays music, um, and uh, smart, and uh, the most pleasant personality in the world. And, and she was there in church. Uh, she got married um, to Nathaniel, and I'm blanking on her last name right now, but I love seeing our young people. They're going to be going up uh, working in uh, his church in Oregon. And uh, boy, we're the best. We've got the best young people. I just love seeing our young people grow up and live for God. And uh, some are full-time. They're not, uh, they're actually being paid through ministry. Some, some more young people, they'll get a secular job. And, and none of our kids ever have a problem getting, getting our young people are just the best. They, they get good jobs. I, I wonder how they get the job. They think, how did you graduate from a small Christian school? Maybe, Maybe a couple years of a Christian college or, or a junior college, or maybe a college, Bible college degree, and now you're in law enforcement or computer or whatever. How did you get all that done? But, but they learn character and honesty and to do their job well, and they learn people skills. And, and all of a sudden, you got young people just doing a great job. I love seeing our young people grow up. And uh, the, the Rubio boys, all three of them, uh, they sang uh, Sunday night as uh, Michael's last night here at church with us. And what a great thing to be a part of God's work. You know, there's nothing better than to know you're saved, to have the word of God in your hand, and to have a good church where you have fellowship, preaching, service, where people are busy for God. And I'm so thankful that we get to be a part. I'm honored beyond words that I get to be a part of the ministry here. Thank you for being so faithful. 
and uh, giving, uh, financially giving, giving of time in prayer. Oh, we need prayer. And and um, I'm not dealing with it today, but oh, our country needs prayer. And our the the division and the that anger that gets rallied, uh, that gets stirred up. And, and that's all from the devil. Uh, that's not God's plan. Um, you know, you have a difficulty, a conflict, you solve it. But there's a peaceable way to solve things. And that's, I mean, I guess sometimes there's war. But uh, I don't think, I just think there's a way to do things where you don't have to go to, go to fight with one another. But who knows? Um, we're, in a, we're in a world full of sinners. And uh, I just hope you'll pray for our country. I love this country. And, and I love who we are. We're the, by the way, it's the best place on earth. And let's don't get too critical of it. If we can improve it, fine. But realize this, 7 billion people would all like to live in America. And there's only 300 million of us or somewhere around there. So we don't want 7 billion people in America. It'd be a mess. But, but we're blessed. And don't forget how good God's been. So pray for your country and pray for our leaders and, and pray for wisdom. This poor, this poor, confused state. And it's got all kinds of evil leadership, um, corrupt leadership. And, and, oh, we need God. And so pray. But let me just show you a verse or two here. Uh, as we look this morning, I was thinking about some of the media situation we're in, where you keep getting bombarded day after day and hour after hour with with the same media stuff. And, uh, you know, um, good or bad, there's a persuasiveness that comes, it pushes and pushes you. I'm not dealing with this, but Proverbs talks about a, a contentious woman's like a continual dropping in a very rainy day, you know, drip, drip, drip. And, uh, and that's a terrible analogy, but it's God's analogy. You know, this lady just constantly nagging and nagging and nagging. And, uh, but the, things wear on us. They do. And I was thinking about this story of Judges chapter 14. And this is the story of Samson. Uh, Samson enters into his career. Um, and he starts out with this gal that he, he had no business uh, getting involved. And, and he had, he, he had several ladies and, and they messed him up and, and ultimately, Delilah, you know the story of Delilah and the shaved head and the loss of power. But here's the key. If you look at Judges 16, 15, and she said to him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lies. Remember, she said, how, how did you get so strong? And that's over in verse 5. Uh, the, the Philistine said to her, You find out where his great strength comes from. And in verse 7, Samson said, if they bind me, and uh, of course it wasn't true, he was lying to her. And then a little bit, verse 10, Delilah said, you have mocked me and told me lies. In verse 11, if they bind me with new ropes, and, and one thing after, and he, and he did, he lied to her. And uh, But finally he got to his hair, and it was getting closer and closer. And in verse 16, um, it, it came to pass when she pressed him daily, with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. His soul was vexed unto death. And that's what I want to talk about here. There are things that wear on us. And you know, by now three times he, he lied to her, you know, if they buy me with new cords and then I'll be weak. And she said, so she did it. And then she said, the Philistines be upon thee. And they all came and he broke the cords. He knew she was setting him up. He knew he was headed for destruction. He knew good and well that that uh, it was all deception. But but men get stupid, and I'm guessing ladies can do it too. And so, um, but she pressed him each day, and it says the word vex. She vexed him, and it began to wear on his soul. And you know what? Sometimes a little kid can do that with a mom. Mommy, 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 mommy. And, and the mom, what do you want? You can have the car keys. You can have my credit card. Just stop it. And, and we allow this world to vex us. That's what commercials are. You know, you know the stories of the multi-million dollar commercials on Super Bowl. And they're only 15 seconds, 30 second commercials. And well, why, why do we spend the money um, as, a, as a business to put a little cartoon gecko with an Australian accent on the screen because continual advertising, it wears, it vexes us. It starts to influence us and all the money billboards and, and, uh, uh, TV commercials, radio commercials, 
Why do they do it? And over and over and over. Why do they do it? Because it wears you down and it gets you thinking. It changes your thinking. And in this case, Samson knew. He knew it was wrong. He knew what he knew was going to happen. And yet he went ahead and told her everything. How could he do that? Did he not think he was going to get caught? Did he not think it was going to ruin him? But you see, the devil wears us down and he works on us and he, um, he pushes us and little by little, he gets us to, to our resistance down to where we just say, just forget it. I'm done. Just forget it. And, um, whether it be, um, a moral issue like with Samson here, or, and it was moral and spiritual or, or whether it be some temptation, look over the book of Proverbs with me, Proverbs chapter four. And, uh, we look at Proverbs chapter 4 and um, down at verse 15. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 15. And he's talking about the path of the wicked. Go back to verse 14. Proverbs 4, verse 14 and 15. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of evil men. So there is a path and there is a way. And you know what it means. That a path is this is the direction. But the way is how you do it. The way he throws a ball. The way she does her hair. Uh, those kind of things. So that's more personal in mannerisms. The path is this direction. This course. And he said in verse 14, don't go in the path of the wicked. And don't go the way of evil men. Don't do things the way evil men do it. And so, and hold your place there. Now we all know that, that we get tempted. We all know that there's certain pressures that come. And sometimes maybe you've had a struggle with liquor in the past or depression or anger or whatever it might be. Um, and, and so um, this way or this path that's before you, uh, what does he say to do? Look at verse, uh, verse 15, avoid it, pass not by it and uh, uh, avoid it. Uh, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. When you and I know that there is an area that could wear us down, uh, it, it, for instance, I have, uh, oh, once or twice, I guess, been gone into a liquor store to buy a Coke. I remember one time I was out of town, long ways, long couple of several hour drive to get to a funeral I was doing, place I didn't know, and I get there real early, and there was nothing around this, this uh, cemetery it was just a graveside, and um, and I thought, I'd just like something to drink. I'd like anything. Um, and so I drove around and around. I didn't want to get too far. I didn't know the area, and there was a little corner liquor store, and uh, I went in and bought a Coke, and, and they, they put it in a paper bag and handed it to me like this. It could have been a liquor bottle, and uh, I went out and saw it. I thought, oh, pull, that, pull the bag off. If anybody sees me, at least they'll know I'm drinking soda, but I make it a general rule. I try to not go into liquor stores. I, I, I'm not saying it's a sin to go in there. Proverbs does say, don't look at the wine. Just, just don't get, why, why would we not look in the wine when it moves itself in the cup? Because looking begins to wear on us. It's not a sin to go down the lick around the grocery store, but I try to avoid it. I just want to keep some things out of there. I want to keep things off my mind. And right here he said, don't go in the path of the wicked. Don't go in the way of evil men. And what are you supposed to do? Avoid it. Just, just don't go there. Don't even pass by it. And there are things, because we are flesh and, and we do grow tired. And as we get older, we grow tired. We get tired just getting up and getting ready in the morning. Uh, we get tired. And uh, there are things we need to be careful uh, because it will wear us down. And uh, especially young people and career getting going or education just getting going. And life gets flowing, and maybe a marriage, then maybe a couple of children, and you can get you can get worn down. Pressure at home can wear you down. Uh, over an overwhelmed wife, overwhelmed with house and kids and busyness, and maybe having to work some hours as well. And and a husband is one more overwhelming thing, and she could just get discouraged and just say, "Forget it. I don't. I don't even care about being a good wife." And you, you can't let that happen because um, it's going to end up wrong. We've got to keep fresh and, and we've got to keep saying, I'm, but by God's grace, I'm going to get time with God. I'm going to renew my strength. Isaiah says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I've got to get renewed. I've got to, I've got to keep doing the right thing, even though it's a weary time. And then for the husband, 
of that overwhelmed wife, he's got to be careful because he could think, boy, there's, there's, I can go down to the ball field or the gym or, you know, maybe his past has been at a, a, a liquor and he, a, like a bar and he's used to drinking liquor and he's turned from all that and, and uh, gotten saved. And, and, but his home could be wearing him down where he, you know, just go back down to the bar. They all talk to me. Nobody there is in a hurry or pressured and, and uh, things wear us down. And we need to understand that, that we can get worn down. Let me, let me show you another verse. Uh, second, over to the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And again, it's a consciousness that we need. We can get worn down. I don't believe anybody ever committed suicide that didn't think about it and think about it and think about it. And they focused on the negatives. They focused on the hopelessness. They didn't focus on God, I guarantee you that. They didn't focus on the Bible and preaching and, and, uh, and prayer. But they focused on the negative and the woe is me and the hopelessness of life. And, and see, this is a book of hope. This is a book of promise. And, um, and, and I'm not saying that I've never been down or discouraged. And some of us mentally, we are more. My, I, my family is just an up family. And so I was raised around hope and encouragement. And even before we were saved, my family was that we can do it. Uh, we can make it happen. Let's, let's just go on. And, and my, my dad, especially, he was so up and, and uh, always hopeful. And my mom was that way. Even, uh, you know, there was a, my dad left when we were young and then she remarried and, and she was a single mom for a while. Those pressures, my mom stayed up. And then when she married my, my stepdad that became such a dear friend of mine through all these many years, um, they both were up together and, and they were always encouraging and, and uh, they were a bright spot, but but the fact is, uh, you know, life, some people, they, they get so down. Some people, um, and, and by the way, if you get down like that, it, it, go to your Bible, go to prayer. And if you need to call somebody, I, I met with a, a guy one time, his wife, and they're good looking together, young couple, could, I mean, athletic, uh, former military, um, in their late twenties, educated, um, together. I mean, really I, I, this is a couple, everybody think, wow, they've got it all together. He was near suicide and life just was wearing on him. And, and I don't know why he, he was so together. I don't know why, why he would be hopeless, but life gets that way. And, um, and, uh, so I started going down, he lived in Temecula and this many, many years ago. And I drive down every morning and I said, I asked him, what time do you have to be up? to get up and get to your job and everything in order. He said, I have to be, I have to be up and getting going at 6.30. I said, I want to be at your door tomorrow morning, 6.30. And every morning, Monday through Friday, I was at his door, 6.30 in the morning, knocked on his door. Sometimes he'd be right there at the door. Sometimes I'd wake him up. Um, and all I did was just say hi, and I'm praying for you, and I hope you're doing okay, and chat for 30 seconds, um, put a hand on his shoulder and, and, and pray for him and say, God, give him grace to get through the day. And uh, I don't know how long I did it. My, I, I have no idea. It's been a long time ago. But finally a day came. He said, he said, Pastor, I'm okay. You don't have to keep coming down here this early in the morning. And, and, um, and he said, you probably saved my life. And I didn't do anything except show that I cared. But you know what? He had enough sense to know he needed some help through that dark day. And, and, uh, and, and look, we're, we are flesh. But don't get worn down. Um, don't let the moral issues wear you down. Don't let the... The weariness of life gets you so discouraged. When you find despair coming, find somebody that can bring some light into your darkness or find somebody that can turn you, uh, but, but make it a spiritual person. Don't make it the old crowd. You know, I've got such a lousy marriage and I'm frustrated, so I go to work and somebody there, the devil just happens to find somebody to cross my path. They have a lousy marriage and we begin to get close because we both have lousy marriages. Well, that's the beginning of a great thing. Um, but, you know, we get worn down. And so there, if you look there at 2 Timothy chapter 2 um, in Titus, so 2 Timothy chapter 2, and you look down at verse um, 21 to 23, he says in verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, the these he's talking about, he's talking about vessels in your home, like crystal and, and uh, old garbage cans. These is a vessel, but they're different. And um, he says, if a man purge himself or separate himself from these things. And then you go down to verse uh, 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. Theologically, in verse 23, there is there are people who will bring this, yeah, well, what about, you know, uh, I'm in the, the flat earth 
um, community and uh, foolish and unlearned questions. There are things that will come at you. You know, I think you can lose your salvation. No, let me explain something. You're not, you're not going to be raptured. You're going to go through the tribulation. The church is going through the tribulation. And you get all these doctrines. That, and see, doctrine will wear you down. And you don't have to listen to everybody. You just don't. He says right there in verse 23, foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Um, verse 24, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle. You know, we don't have to listen to all that. I don't have to fight with them. I can say, sorry, we're not going there. And if you, I've heard people say, pastor, what do I do? So-and-so calls and they get angry and they're cussing me and yelling. And I'm thinking, do you not know how to hang your phone up? You're not going to call me and cuss me and be ugly. I will hang up on you. Uh, I had a guy call me one day, a dear friend, but he was struggling. And he called me, I'm thinking he was pretty drunk. And he was just ranting and going on and on. And I said, you know what? I love you. And you can call me anytime. But right now, I'm not talking to you the way you are. And he was just going on and on. And I just hung up. And I, I wasn't mad. I didn't have to be ugly to him. But see, don't let people wear you down. They can wear you down morally. They can wear you down emotionally. Circumstances can wear you down. It's not always people. Sometimes it's life. And, and young mothers, oh, you young mothers should be so guarded because like it or not, there are hormonal things that go on in your body. The voice of experience, I have never had it. I have no clue, but I'm married and I've got two married daughters and, and I've got a, a bunch of great friends, married couples in our church and, and, and your body goes through some things. And when you feel yourself traveling into the valley of despair, find somebody, don't, don't let it wear you down. Don't let it get you down to the point where you throw in the towel uh, spiritually. Go back a couple pages, uh, or go forward one more page to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, just the next book over. Look down at verse 9. The same type of thing, um, the wearing down philosophically, theologically. Um, uh, Titus chapter 3 verse 9, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Uh, there's an, an awful lot of wrong doctrine that can creep into your life. That's why I encourage you, don't just go on YouTube and, or, or wherever on social media and listen to anybody. I've been, I've been saved 44 years. I've read my Bible every day for the last 44 years, somewhere in there. Um, and I am so careful. I've pastored these 38 years. And if I don't know who the person is, if they've not been recommended to me by someone I trust, I highly trust, I just don't. I can tell you there is enough good by good people that I know I don't need to venture into people I don't know. I just don't do it. I absolutely don't do it. Why? Because you're to avoid foolish questions and doctrines and genealogies and questions and strifes and that's, look, that's what we're supposed to do. He says, see, you can get worn down theologically. And here's one thing that will happen is you'll get all this coming in and finally you'll say, forget it. No one knows. There's no way to know what's right. There's no way to know what's wrong. Forget it. I'm done with it. And you'll throw in the towel on being a solid Bible believer and you'll become a casual, complacent Christian who never has any devotion to God and never makes a difference. You know why? Because you got wore down. And we are flesh and we're... We're a, our souls grow weary, and um, man, don't don't let don't let this world wear you down. And uh, it, when you feel the pressures coming, avoid it. Get don't. I'm not gonna let someone. One uh, one time years ago, a lady in our church wrote kind of a she and her husband were having trouble. I'd counsel with the two of them, and and she called because she felt she had a a consoling, uh, listening ear. And one time I talked to her, but I don't keep talking to the wife. I can't get the husband in there. I'm not going to fix it. She can call my wife, but but I'm not going to become her her sounding board. I can't afford that. And um, one gal got a little, a little uh, she didn't say anything wrong, but I could tell she was being a little, uh, she was searching, seeing if there's an open door. And I made it clear there's no open door here. I am not available. I wouldn't talk to her again. Period. Nothing. I would not talk to her because I'm not going to get worn down. I'm not going to let those things. You need your phone, your television, your computer. Don't don't slowly watch a little more and then a little more and a little more and find yourself. Suddenly you're looking at things you never would have looked at before. You see, we're we're flesh. We have this old man and he is prone to wander. 
And the, the new man, the spiritual man says, no, nope, we're not going there. And no, nope, we're going to keep this thing in. We're going to keep this ship straight. Um, uh, I never look down on anybody who stumbles because, because um, we're all flesh. You know, uh, scripture says, uh, take heed you that think you stand lest you fall. Uh, none of us is, I'm amazed at the self-righteousness of people on social media acting like they've never sinned and they've never had a wrong action, wrong thought. Whoa, what a world of arrogance. Um, and I, 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 I don't think, I mean, I think people that uh, do wrong, you know, you robbed a bank, you ought to, you ought to go to jail, pay whatever the price is. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to hate the guy who the proverb says that you don't despise a thief and they steal to satisfy their soul and they're hungry. Now you don't have to rob a bank. Um, if you're hungry, but, uh, but be, be aware that we do get worn down and despair and discouragement, earthly circumstances, theological things, moral, financial things can wear on you and wear on you till you're so discouraged because of financial pressures. Find help. Find somebody who, who's got some direction that can pull you out of that emotional despondency. Why don't I close this, this one quick illustration? One of our dearest couples college graduates, finest people, serve the Lord in, in many, many ways. People I would trust uh, to do anything, spiritually speaking, and, and a great home, great kids. But many, many years ago, um, uh, a child was born and, and a great depression weighed down on the wife. And, and um, it, was, it, was, it was very, very difficult. And they went through some of the worst emotional and, and because of decisions, there's some very difficult valleys they went through and nothing immoral or anything like that, but they went through some very, very uh, scary days. And uh, after it's all over and, and she got everything back in order and her husband was a loving husband. I mean, they're just a great couple, but they came to me and they said, pastor, and they actually had this, the, the story sort of written out and said, you can use this for anyone else who's facing this situation, and you can use our names. And I'm not going to use it here because there's no justification for it, but they would be a couple I would send anyone to for advice, for counsel as far as how to get through these difficult days because they've been there and they, they found victory and strength through the grace of God. But they went through some very dark days emotionally. Miss The, the missus did and hard, uh, hard things and and I, I, um, but see, wisdom is, is God will help you, but often he'll help you by you avoiding a situation or number one, by avoiding whatever that circumstance is, uh, or number two, um, finding someone to help carry you through. Don't think you're a failure if you find yourself wearing down. Any of us can do it. Wisdom says, I'm going to avoid it. If I used to have an alcohol problem, I'm not going to go to the bar after work and drink Cokes with the guys while they're drinking beer. I'm just not because sooner or later, they're going to wear me down. Um, just simple as that. That guy who you used to uh, smoke pot with you or whatever, you just got to get away from him. You got to get new friends. You can't because they will wear you down. And uh, we're, we're, we're human. And, you know, I know this arrogant world acts like everybody's so righteous and holy and they've never done anything, but it's they're not. Um, we have to understand how frail Pro Psalms, he says, Lord, make me to know my end, how brief, how short my days are, that I may know how frail I am. And I messed that verse up. But, but uh, David says, help me to know, help me to remember. And I want to encourage you today. Uh, if you feel yourself wear, getting worn down, um, talk to either. First of all, if it's a situation that you can avoid, just avoid it. Um, it might be a forward person at work. It might be you, you work by the racetrack and you gamble on the horses. I have no idea. But if you find yourself wearing down, um, or it, it might be emotional, uh, depression, and you, you've come to, I have two preacher friends, two very successful men, both told me they'd, they'd come near killing themselves. And I thought, well, I've had some bad days. I've never, I've never really thought about doing that. But these are good men. And they were in the valley. And, and see, there's a spiritual warfare going on. It's not just me in biology. It's me in biology. And it's a demonic world. And sometimes we need to avoid a situation. And then secondly, sometimes we need some help. We need somebody who's been there that can help us and, and guard us. I hope you have a good day. Don't let the devil wear you down. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. The verse after verse after verse. Yea, all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. All these promises, they're amen promises. They're great promises. Uh, we've got a great God. Let's live a great week for the Lord. Uh, be at church tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Uh, we'll have our morning moments tomorrow, but tomorrow night be a great evening as we study the, the proper treatment of one another, justice and judgment and proper caring for one another. Have a great day. God bless you. Let's fight the good fight and live for God.